Uh, continuing with motion of charged particles, this is um, looking at, uh, you know, we're using force uh, and acceleration when solving for speeds and velocities as opposed to potential different, given potential difference and given, um, and given uh, using conservation energy. So this is kind of a, a really challenging thing to do, uh, challenging, to, you know, because a number of steps, but it's pretty, pretty neat. So uh, this would occur where you would see this, that you have to use this strategy, is if you had a parallel plate apparatus and your particle was being accelerated uh, by going through them, not across, like not across from one side to the other, but it's actually traveling through. And, and this is actually how a lot of parallel plates are used to accelerate particles in, in particle accelerators and such. And so the idea is that, you know, if my, if my negatively charged uh, particle for example, could be the other way around, but it was, you know, coming through and it was close to, it was entering the plates close to the negative plate. Well, as it moved through, there might be no force causing it to speed up or slow down sort of in the X direction, so to speak, in the horizontal, but it would accelerate towards the positive plate, right? And so what would happen is it would leave on an angle like this. And so the X component of my velocity would be the same. It wouldn't have changed. The y component, though, instead of being zero, it will, won't be zero anymore. And that means my overall speed, magnitude of speed, will be a bigger number. And that's really, that's really how it works. And the thing is, the key is thinking of it like projectile motion, right? I mean, there's no gravity. No gravity. Don't even think about gravity during this. We don't assume any, assume it's negligible. But, you know, similar to projectile motion where, you know, some object, it has an initial x component of velocity, but say no y component, the easy projectile motion, right? Well, when it lands on the ground, say it's rolling off the lab bench, it lands on the ground, it's still moving it horizontally with the same speed, but it's but it has accelerated downward, obviously. That's why it moved down. It's the exact same idea. Okay, you, you treat it the same with solving the questions. So in the x direction, there is no acceleration, so the initial x velocity is equal to the final, and you can use the formula that the distance, you know, in this case it would be the distance between the, across the plates, so whatever the length of the plates are, is equal to Vx times the time it's in the plates, okay? In the y direction, it's, it's a bit, the formula is a bit, is, is different, but, um, because we're not using gravity, right? Uh, but the field strength, kind of like gravitational field strength, but electric field strength. So if you knew the electric field strength in here, and that's sort of a trigger to you, by the way, that that's, this is one of the things you're using. Even when you're given electric field strength and velocities, then you're looking at this strategy as opposed to if you're given potential difference. Anyway, um, electric field strength is force per unit charge, right? That's what I have written right here. Um, well, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, um, Field strength then is mass times acceleration. Now I'm saying EY, AY, sorry, because again, it's only going to accelerate in this direction, like, right? It's not going to accelerate side to side. And then um, it's still divided by Q. So if we're looking for that acceleration, I'm just rearranging this formula to find acceleration. Um, so I know my acceleration, um, my V2Y to solve for it then. This is just the formula, kinematic formula, V2 equals V1 plus AT. Well, it, you know, we assume V1Y is zero. I think in all these questions we do. AY, you find using this. Usually all this information is given. And then T is the time in the plate. So that's where you might need the X direction to help you find the T. Just like in projectile motion, usually you find the T and you carry it over. Okay? So these really, the formulas then is this one here, and I'm highlighting, this in the orange, and this one is what you're going to use, okay? Which actually makes these hard questions not that hard. So let's go through an example. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here it is. So same picture. I mean, obviously, by the way, I didn't say this, but it could be a positively charged particle, and it would come in, you know, close to the positive charge plate, and it would come in the other direction. It doesn't really change how you how you solve it, right? So in this case, we're given it's an electron. We know its initial speed. Um, traveling parallel initially. That's just saying that it's going this direction to start. V1, Y is zero. That's what that line means. Okay. Um, we know the length of the plates and we know the field. We know the field strength. 
And that would be typical, very typical question. We want to know the velocity when it leaves the plates, right? So it's going to have an x component, a y component, and you'll have to resolve them using Pythagorean theorem. Um, uh, electrons, so I know the charge and I know the mass. Okay, that's just mass and charge of an electron. Not caring about the negative sign, it's not relevant. Okay, so x direction, y direction. Um, don't look at the y direction yet, okay? I'm going to cover it up. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Close your eyes. You're only looking at the x direction. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So, you know, we know dx, we know vx, we're going to find the time it's in those plates. Very small time. Which makes sense because, you know, that's, that's 3.5 million meters per second. Like these, this electron is traveling really, really fast. Okay? And that's typical in a, in a particle accelerator anyway. Okay? 3.5 million meters per second is how fast this thing's going. So it's only in that little plate for a very, very short time. Okay? So you know the time. You're going to carry that to the y direction, just like projectile motion. Okay? So again, like what, you know, it's nice to start by writing the formula. So that's the formula in the x direction. That's the formula in the y direction. Might as well just write it down. If you see this question on your test or on your problem set or on your exam, right away, just write that formula down and write this one down. So we're no v1y. In this case, v1y doesn't have to be zero. I've never written a question where it's not zero, <laughs> but theoretically it doesn't have to be. And it doesn't change the question, right? It just means that you've got a number there. So v1y you know, if it came in for some reason on an angle, and that wouldn't be the most effective way to set up your plates, but if you did for some reason, you would just solve it the same. You just have a number instead of zero there, okay? Anyway, so EAY is the formula I showed you, feels from Q over M. So you just solve for it. So look at that number, by the way. Don't freak out. Like I always say, it can't be bigger than 10 to the 8. That's speed. This is acceleration. So a number in this order is typical, okay? So we know AY, we know T. We can solve for v2y. Okay? So we know our v2y. We know our v2x. v2 then is, you know, just we've done it all before. <laughs> Draw a right angle triangle, solve for the angle. So the, the final velocity then, in this case, will be 3.8 million meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal. Okay? So it's gained 300,000 meters per second in that little plate. And that is a good answer. It's good because I told you less than 3.8 times 10 to the 6 or 10 3.0 times 10 to the 8, sorry. And uh, it did speed up, which it should have. Okay? Yeah, that's it. That's solving using force and, and field strength.